Mm -hmm. And for those of you who like to Ponderosa during Havara. How many like the Ponderosa? Oh, yeah. During Havara. You understood everything I've said so far? Yeah. Yes. Become compliant now. Amen. When the Exodus is called for, and the angel of death through the tribulation, if you're not ready to move, to go, and return to the now in your heart, you won't be ready to return to the land. You've got to be ready now to return in your heart. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. And how do you know if you're ready? What proliferates our walk? Less excuses or more excuses? If we're growing in Yeshua, the excuses should be less and less and less, and the obedience should be greater and greater and greater without any arm twisting or manipulation by a brother in the Lord or a sister in the Lord. If you still need a brother or sister to twist your arm to do the right thing, <laughs> and yet Yahuwah is saying there, a Navi is keeping you. Who's the Navi? Yeshua. He's keeping you. You're not destroyed. There are second chances. There are third chances. Yes. There are fourth chances. Yes. Because Metatron is watching over you so you're not consumed. But the time is coming when Metatron will be removed and the anti-Messiah will be on the loose and the same lack of trust you have now that he can't provide for your family now, if you really obey him completely, will cause you to take the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Rabbi, I'm offended. All right. Okay. I don't mean to offend you. Get offended. Somebody's going to take the mark of the beast. It says it in the Word. And the mark of the beast has nothing to do with going shopping in Publix and a computer chip so you can scan groceries. Nope. Right. Nope. Right. No, it's not. The mark of the beast is an allegiance to the one who will shut down the world economy, Saudi Arabia, because all things flow through wine. You have not read Revelation the way you're supposed to, many of you. Revelation, it's all about the wine. The black gold, the wine of oil, it all goes through the oil. We're in Libya, we're in Iran, we're in Afghanistan. It's not Gaddafi, it's not, it's not, it's not Saddam, it's not anything else. The Mujahideen, Hamid Karzai, those are all pseudo-reasonings of men. The reason behind it is the wine of the fornication of the city that sits on seven hills that is Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Look at on a map. Rome does not sit on seven hills, it's on seven mountains, it sits on seven hills. Mecca in Saudi Arabia is the only city in the world other than Jerusalem that sits on seven mountains, not hills. Two different words in the Greek. Hills are small piles. Mountains are mountains. There are a different word in the Greek in Revelation. Mecca sits on seven mountains, surrounded by eight bodies of water. Rome is surrounded by no bodies of water other than the Mediterranean Ocean to its east. Hmm. That's not surrounding. Can he provide for you? If the footmen are wearing you, man, how are you going to contend with them? Now, question. Something to ponder as we go forth. We remember the Exodus today, but we celebrate the future Exodus if we're ready. Just like our forefathers, they had to be ready, yeah? Okay. They weren't ready, they didn't leave. Yes? Am I making right. this stuff up? No, no. Not you got to be ready, because the second ready. Exodus is coming when we're going to go back to the land. Now, we've always thought, as I have, that because of modern technology, planes, boats, naval vessels, that when we go back to the land of Israel in the millennial kingdom, when Yeshua takes us back or when we have to go back, whatever your theology is, mm -hmm. that we are going to fly back, right? Nobody goes to Israel today jumping rope, right? What do we use? El Al? El Al. American Delta, right? Some more airlines now go to Israel. None of my dreams. Makes sense. But remember what Yeshua said. The Exodus will be like it was then. We walked out and we walked in. Now, there's a couple, I do admit, there's a couple of obstacles. For instance, we're in America, yeah? Yes, right. To our left is a small body of water <laughs> no, known as the Pacific. <laughs> to, our right, right. to our right is another small body of water known as the Atlantic. But if the Exodus is a prototype or a foreshadow of the end time Exodus, is it possible that will one of the one of the things, not the only thing, that will make the end time Exodus 
far superior to the former. In the former Exodus, only the Red Sea was split. Little Yamsuf, the Sea of Reeds. But how about if Yahuwah splits the Indian Ocean, the Arabic Arabian Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, every, every corner of the earth where Israel is captive in the nations, all those oceans split to make the, the Red Sea crossing look like a pond in Broward County. <laughs> Selah. 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 Impossible, huh? Yes, I agree. In the natural, it's absolutely impossible. But with Yahuwah, anything possible. All things are possible. Right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, radio audience. Shabbat shalom. We love it. Governor, go ahead. I'm preaching a message entitled Studying the Fathers. I'll try to make it short and sweet, but I won't go past six. Don't let me go past six. Studying the Fathers. That's Eastern time, y'all. Studying the fathers or our future exodus. Behind the cattle over. In Shemot 12.17 it says this. Go with me to Shemot 12.17. You shall observe the Chag Matzot. For on this very day. Turn to your neighbor and say today. 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 I have brought your divisions out of the land of Mitzrayim. Amen. Today. That's why we're in Mikra Kodesh. Today we came out of Mitzrayim. Yeah. Therefore you shall observe... This day, turn your neighbor and say this day, this this day. day. in your generations by a judgment mishpat leolam vayet forever. Now go with me to your miyahu 16.14. Quickly, I'm not going to wait for you because I want to get through this quickly. Your miyahu 16.14. Therefore see the days are coming, saith Yahuwah. But you should still turn there anyway. <laughs> that it shall no more be said, Yahuwah lives, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim. Ooh. But Yahuwah lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, oh. and from all the lands where he had driven them. Yeah. And I will bring them again to their land that I gave to their Ahavot. Oh, now go back to Shemot. 12.21 Shemot 12.21 And you, Yahuwah said to Moshe When you return to Mitzrayim See that you do all these wonders before Pharaoh I may have gotten the chapter wrong Which I have put in your hand But I will harden his lave And he shall not let the people go Sorry, it's chapter 4 Chapter 4, verse 21, now 22. And you shall say to Pharaoh, this says Yahuwah, Israel is my son, even my Bahor. Yeah, my firstborn. Stop. In order to understand the future exodus Amen. from the north and all the lands, we have to understand the historical exodus. If we understand the historical exodus, we will understand the future exodus that we just read about in Yirmiyahu 16. Right. So in Shemot 4, it says, again, verse 23, 22 and 23. You shall say to Pharaoh, this says Yahuwah, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So who is Yahuwah's son? Israel is Yahuwah's son, his firstborn. Yahuwah's son was and is Israel. Verse 23, and I say to you, let my son go. So let my son out of Egypt. Israel is my son, my firstborn. Let my son go. Go with me to Hoshea, because if you refuse to let him go, I will slay your sons, your first even your Bachor. If you don't want to let him go, no problem. I'll kill your firstborn. And happened they didn't let him go, and they killed their firstborn. Now go to Hoshea 11.1. Hoshea 11.1 again, studying the Father. So in order to understand the promise of Jeremiah 16, the days are coming, 
when it will no longer be said Yahuwah lives who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim, but Yahuwah lives who brought them out from the land.